Welcome back. For this week's fly, we're gonna go back to the streamers and we're gonna go with Kelly's TNA Leech. Um, I know we did the Conehead TNA first, which I kind of put the buggy in front of the horse on that one. Um, kind of wanted to do the progression of it, um, you know, going through the the Leech, the Conehead, uh, the um, Bunker, the Bangtail, all that, but. We're kind of going to take a step back on this one. Um, we're going to go with his TNA Leech. Um, typically, I like to tie this one um, in white, black, olive, sometimes tan. Um, white being my favorite just because you can track it and see it, but white isn't really the best for tying purposes. Um, it can be a little tough to see and with with my lighting I have here the reflections and everything get a little difficult so we're gonna go with olive on this one today but um, I believe when we did the cone head version we did that in black so we're gonna stay away from the all white because you kind of lose some detail but we're gonna go ahead and tie this in um, as always just leave your eighth of an inch right there so you can manipulate this to get it to go the direction you want and like I said in the conehead video, um, this was one of the first ones, the one of the first patterns that Kelly designed uh, to be articulated, and then kind of came a, became a series, you know, with the the conehead, the bunker, um, the bangtail, which just he just. Uh, came up with that one here just recently but I mean this has been going on I want to say it was since 99 somewhere about that time I'm not a hundred percent on the on the history of it I want to say it was somewhere in that time frame where you know the original came out but uh, I would have to double check on that one so don't quote me is that being exact but um Along the lines with these, uh, you know, kind of series, um, I want to start doing a few of these, you know, going uh, the TNA series, um, the blondes, uh, that's the one that I'm doing some, doing some reading on, you know, Joe Brooks and uh, Dan Bailey, they had uh, the honey blonde, the platinum blonde, and then Kelly with the, the stacked blonde, so probably going to wind up going through those here in the near future. I'm not exactly sure when. I still need to get some details on the particulars of those flies. But uh, that'll be something we'll be going into here later on. But with this pattern, it's, um, it's a very simple pattern. Very, very easy to tie but yet it is so effective. The motion that this thing has in the water, the way the marabou just kind of has its own motion to where it creates extra motion just by itself is uh, what makes this fly so effective. But it's just palmered marabou um, from the front, or from the back all the way to the front. So we're just going to go through this. Um, the only difference between this one and the cone head is, well, we don't have a cone head, basically. <laughs> oh my. But just going to do two stacks on this back hook, or two plumes of marabou, and spin for me a little. There we go. That thick stem at the bottom didn't quite want to spin, but we got it to cooperate. And when you're running these to the front, just kind of, you know, get one or two good wraps, pick your stuff out, anything that might wind up getting trapped. I'm going to try and get one more here without causing too much of a mess up in the front. There we go. But uh, just kind of work these right around and you're going to have a nice cover for your back hook. 
We'll just fold that in there. And mm, try not to put the hook through my finger. And then just kind of walk this marabou back to where it covers everything really nicely. You can see. Um, check the monitor. It it covers up your hook. It covers up your. Um, it just makes it a nice looking solid body with just two. Um, Palmered marabou plumes on there. I like to pick the nice wispy ones. Now, if you've watched the tying tips on working with marabou, I go through on which ones I like to use with the spay or palmered style, and which ones I like to use for tails, overwings, etc. But uh, so I won't really revisit that one too much. So we're just going to tie this off real quick. I'm going to take a marker here and I'm just going to touch this up, kind of tone that white down a little bit. And I really didn't like that last whip finish I got on there, so I'm just going to take and touch that with a little bit of glue. Just some regular head cement. Touch that real quick. And that's the back section. my rotary function up just a little bit. I got the wire pre-tied in as I normally do on these articulated ones just to save a little bit of time. Um, go ahead and grab our bead here and before I get too far ahead of myself start my thread. And just bring this right around. Got the one bead on. It's a five millimeter back hook, by the way. Uh, it's a 2461, which you know I normally use um, the 2461s, and then it's a size four, and the front's a size two. Um, but you can tailor these to whatever size suits the river system, or. You know, lake, whatever it may be that you're fishing. Um, tailor these to whatever size you need. Um, like if I were to take these back to Pennsylvania, um, normally don't use the bigger stuff back there, you know, I'd probably scale this down to a four and a six. But I do still use the big stuff from time to time. It's just normally I will use the the smaller stuff when I'm fishing back home, but out here, um, I tie them in all sizes, keep everything with me. You know, some days it just seems like the the bigger flies um, kind of put the fish's heads down. They don't want to. They don't want to touch them. So you can have something smaller, and you wind up getting some eats. But uh, it's just one of those things. You got to work work with the fish, see what they're after, and. When you figure it out for that day, forget about it because tomorrow it's probably not going to be the same, <laughs> unfortunately. But we're just going to throw some internal flash on here. I got uh, four strands of gold flashaboo. We're going to run this uh, probably the halfway point on the back hook. Just throw a couple loose wraps on this side, fold these other four strands over and then just kind of work this back. Like I said, all this is is just internal flash. At all. That's all it is. Just gives a little bit more pop, a little bit more um, just a little bit something extra onto the fly. And get all of these here. Measure those out the same length as the ones that are on my side. And then just go ahead and tie that in. And then we're going to go right back to Palmer and Marabou. So you have your package side, which is this side right here, and then your back side, your shiny and dull. When you, when you
when you tie this in, I have the package side facing up right now. And let me get a half hitch in here and I'll continue explaining on this. But the package side is facing up. So now as I turn it, it's facing me. Now when I go to wrap this around, you'll see there I get that rotation. Here's the package side facing this direction. The fibers naturally want to go back this direction to cover up your other, uh, cover up your connection, cover up your um, previous wraps. So if you just work it that way, it's a lot easier and it makes a lot better of a connection, or it makes a lot better of a seamless transition between your front and back hook and between all of your wraps. So we'll go ahead and get a couple, uh, we probably got five turns out of that one. This is a pretty nice wispy one as well. I actually did a good job selecting material this time for a video. It took me long enough to learn. But we'll go ahead and just cover this up. And you don't have to go all the way back. As you throw more wraps in, it's going to cover this stuff up. You can see there's kind of a gap right there. As we get more plumes of marabou on there, and let's get one a little wispier for this next one. That one looks pretty good. As you get more wraps on there, it's going to lay back further, so it will cover these up. Work your thread up to the front, and we'll continue on here. And like I said, this is just one plume right after another, just working your way up to the front, getting a nice clean connection, trying not to bust off marabou tips. And there we are. Get these wraps. You'll notice with the longer fibers, you will tend to trap a little bit more, but I mean, you're not making real tight wraps, so it is easy to go in here and just clean this up. All you gotta do is just run your fingers through it, just kind of lightly pick at it, and they will pull out and not be trapped for you. It gives it a lot cleaner of an appearance. And same thing, just kind of preen all of this back. You can see our connection is starting to get covered up a little bit more as we go. It's looking a lot better. Probably get, we'll probably do two more on this. Just to make sure we get everything covered. Um, make it a nice full front. Um, I like the front to be a little bit fuller than the back if you can. So I mean obviously you see and you're working with a lot more hook too. I mean the back hook we started about the midway point. Um, with this one you're working with the majority of the hook. So naturally it's going to be a little bit and what am I trapping there? Naturally, it's going to fill out a little bit more just because you have more mar more marabou. But it just gives an overall look that I that I like a little bit more having more bulk at the front. back and one more should do it and we're getting, getting a nice connection 
nice cover on our connection. Everything's looking good. This should just be this last plume. We'll take this right to the front. We'll peel it back a little. We'll be good to go. Grab these tips right here. And the dadgum phone is ringing again. Every time I shoot a video, it seems the damn phone rings. Oh well. And I didn't like that second wrap. We're just going to back this off just a touch. It kind of fell on me a little bit. to the front. Go ahead and peel this stuff back again. nice connection. Now the one thing that I mentioned when I was doing the cone head um, video is you can run these lateral lines down here. Um, I know when the original Kelly didn't do it but we're gonna just go ahead and throw these in just to give a little bit of deck fluff just to kinda spruce this thing up a little bit I get to shoot my mouth off a little bit longer. But we're going to take these. You'll see he does this a lot um, on like the Barleys, uh, the, the Kitties incorporate these lateral lines. Um, a couple of his patterns use use these lateral lines. And these are just regular, you know, regular hackle, uh, hackle fibers. Um, I think this one's off of a saddle. I don't, I don't think it's a neck. I don't think I have a neck in this color. I would want to say it's a saddle. I could be wrong though. But either way, I mean, just pick two out that are close to the same size. And I got these a little bit long probably, but I really don't think the length matters a ton. Like I said, it's just to add a little bit extra to the fly. So we'll go ahead and get that tied in and trim that. And we'll whip finish. Like I said, um, simple pattern, very simple pattern and it is really easy to tie but the effectiveness of it is unmistakable you see this thing swimming in the water you'll understand i mean there's a, a good motion good overall appearance and hmm, go figure minus one hackle stem. So we'll go back in here and try this again. Not too often I have that happen. Get this back in here. Give it a couple good wraps. I probably didn't throw a good anchor wrap on that. Call that good. Let's see you come out now. Oh, man. 
maybe I should go back to Nymphs and Dries here. I'm just struggling on this. <laughs> but, there you have it. Got a little bit heavy on the thread wraps up front because I screwed up on the screwed up on the hackle stem on the camera side, but it's all good. We're just going to take our olive marker now and we're just going to touch this up just slightly. Just cut down on the overall white of this. And shot a head cement. We'll call it good. There you have it. There is Kelly Gallup's TNA Leech. Um, like I said, we'll be going through here and doing some. We're gonna do the bang tail. We're gonna do the bunker um, in the near future. I'm not exactly sure when just yet, but uh, we'll see what other stuff I get on. I know I got a couple of uh, dries that I want to get to, a couple of nymphs, and uh, got another original pattern uh, that I just about have perfected, so that one will be coming out soon, and then we'll be getting into the blondes, hopefully, um, and go from there, but done rambling for, for now, till next week. Uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll catch you again.